Hey, how's it going? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials, all info, no fluff. And today I'm going to show you how to send MIDI clock to an external synthesizer or to another DAW. If you haven't watched the last episode, make sure to check that out, where I showed you how to set up virtual MIDI buses as well as virtual audio buses to route MIDI and audio to and from different DAWs. And that setup will remain the same if you're also using any external synthesizers, like I have the Chaos Later Pro Plus. I can use the same system to send MIDI to that and then just connect its audio outs to my interface and Bob is my uncle. So if you did watch the last episode, then you know what this project is all about. I'm sending MIDI from these four tracks into Ableton to control these Ableton built-in instruments. Then I'm sending their audio out onto these four tracks to record the output from Ableton into Reaper. But so far what we have done is only using Ableton as like a sound module. The tempo and transport functions of these two DAWs aren't linked. But if you're using an external synth with an arpeggiator or some built-in time-based effects, or if you're using a drum machine or something like that, if you want to sync that with your DAW, then you also need to send it a clock. And to send a clock is very easy once you set up all the stuff that I showed you last episode. You just go to your preferences, you go to audio, MIDI devices, and you'll find the same bus that you're sending MIDI out from. Double click on it to open this window and you just say send clock to this device and you hit OK. And now we'll say enabled plus clock and I can hit apply and I can get out of here. We also need to set up Ableton to receive clock from Reaper. We can do that by going to preferences, link tempo MIDI. We'll find the same bus that we had tracked enabled before and we also enable sync on here and as soon as we do that you see these two extra boxes on the top of your transport bar so I can close this window and I can click on this external and as soon as you tick that box you will see a few things happen the first thing is when I move my edit cursor in Reaper you will see that it will also move up here right now it's at 11 1 15 1 21 3 etc so that's pretty dope and then if I play you will also see that Ableton is playing right now and it's moving at the same time as Reaper and we can see this orange light indicating to us that it's receiving external clock. You will notice the first issue if you enable the metronome in Reaper and then enable the metronome in Ableton as well. And let's listen to what that sounds like. So if you have a good ear for sync, you'll have already spotted the issue. Otherwise, let's just record a little bit of what we are getting out of Ableton. And if I really zoom in here, we can see that the one in Ableton is actually hitting a little bit early. Let's try to fix this. So if I, for example, go on this track here, go up to insert and go click source, you know, we will, we would expect Reaper's one to hit right here and Ableton's one is hitting right here. So I'm going to disable my snap and I'm going to set a time selection from here to here. I'm going to right click up here on my ruler and I'm going to select minutes and seconds. And we can see that now there's a one millisecond difference between the onset of these two sounds. And we can easily fix this by going back to preferences to the same menu, audio MIDI devices. And I'm going to double click on this device one more time. And down here you have offset input to this device by, let's make it one millisecond. And we can see that it's pretty much in sync now. Let's check out exactly what it is. And I mean, this is under a millisecond. This may be something like 30 samples. So we can get into the nitty gritty of it, but actually there's another issue we should be solving as well. We are also hearing a little bit of drift between the two metronomes. And if it was one millisecond, we would definitely not be able to hear that. So let's listen one more time. So I'm just hearing a slight amount of delay. I'm hearing the Ableton metronome later. And part of the reason for that is that the metronome in Ableton goes out Q out, which is set to master and it comes here. So there's a little bit of audio latency happening as well, which we need to also account for. And in order to do that, I'm not going to use the metronome. I'm going to actually turn this metronome off and I'm just going to start recording my music as I did before. And all right, now that we have a bit of music, we can really zoom in here and we will see that there's a little bit of delay here. So one more time, let's set a time selection and measure this out. And we can see that there's about eight milliseconds for that MIDI message to travel to Ableton and then for the audio to come back here to Reaper. So let's fix this from the Reaper side. I'm gonna go to my preferences one more time. This time I'm gonna come to audio and to recording. And down here we can see that it says use audio driver reported latency. So, you know, any audio driver you have will report an amount of latency to Reaper. And then for example, if in any of your tracks, you have the record set to latency compensated, it would just use that amount to compensate for the latency that's caused. In this case, we can do this manually as well, since we know the exact amount is eight milliseconds. So I'm just going to come down here to input manual offset. So I'm going to set this to eight milliseconds. I'm going to hit apply. Let's delete these and let's record one more time. 
and now it seems pretty fine. Again, there's about 30 or 40 samples, which you can leave because 30 samples is one sixteenth of a millisecond. It is not an issue, but as we see right here, Reaper allows us to also compensate by sample amount. So I can put 30 here or whatever if I really want to fine sync these. And it may take a little bit of time to sync it for the first time, but once you do that, it will always be the same, provided you are using the same sample rate, the same bit depth, and the same buffer size. So this system works well, and I even have on this track a VSTI instrument that's hosted in Reaper, and we can play the project and see that everything is playing nice together, everything's in sync, and also to the metronome. A few things that I need to mention. The first thing is, in terms of tempo changes, we got a little bit of a problem. So let's once again enable both metronomes and check some stuff out. So if I start playing from here, we can see that our two clicks are in sync to each other. There's no driftage. Once we hit here though, and we're hitting this tempo change area, then we are seeing this kind of like a little bit of a slap delay situation happening. And it takes a little bit, but after a while it starts to stabilize again by the time we get to measure 47 or something. So part of the reason for this is that different DAWs would interpret a linear change in tempo differently. So if you've ever imported any MIDI items into Reaper from another DAW that had linear tempo change information in it, you would see that Reaper will not reinterpret that in this linear fashion as we see here. It would instead show a few incremental changes. So it would show us 120, then 120.2, then 121, 122, etc. And if I'm actually writing tempo changes, I prefer to do that. And that's not only more transferable between two different DAWs, but this system is also closer to how a human being would interpret an accelerando. Our brains are not really capable of doing this fully linearly. So maybe, oh, each beat needs to be 1% faster until we arrive at 115. But rather we would go, all right, I have four measures to go down 5 BPM. So in the first measure, let's go down 1 BPM, in the second measure, 2 BPM, and so on. So for these reasons, I think these non-linear tempo changes work better and sound more natural. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the work I do, please consider donating to me through buymeacoffee.com. The link to that will be in the description. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon. Bye.